And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Welcome to Sounds of Revival, a program and teaching ministry calling for the church to hear and respond to the sounds of revival, which are calling us back to our first love and back to our place of holiness and dominion in the earth. Sounds of Revival is brought to you by Greater Love International Church and Revival Center, located here in the city of Indianapolis at 6433 East Washington Street, where the pastor and founder is Bishop Perry E. Jackson. And now, Sounds of Revival. God bless you and welcome to Sounds of Revival. Brought to you by Greater Love International Church and Revival Center. You know that word revival is powerful in the world today because this is what we need. Revive means to bring back to life again. That's what the Word of God does. Jesus said in John 6, 61, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So when God speaks to us, life comes back into us. Amen. So um, again, we're just happy to be here with you today. today. And prior to going into our broadcast, we have a song by Psalmist Lois Foster. And the song she's going to sing is entitled Mara Natha. And this particular song has a powerful message into it because it lets the church know we need to get ready for God's coming. We need to understand that he's, he was coming, but he's coming back for a prepared church. So at this time, we're going to hear from Lois Foster. Again, she writes her own songs. After that, I'll be right back. Jesus came on a donkey, riding meek and lowly. Way was paved with palm branches. He was pure and holy. Healed the sick and raised the dead. Blessed is his rose king. Angels stand and adore him. Let earth and heaven ring. Maranatha, Jesus the Christ. Jesus is coming. Maranatha, Jesus the Christ. Jesus is coming, Maranatha. Jesus the Christ, Jesus is coming, Maranatha. Jesus the Christ, Jesus is coming. He'll return riding a cloud. Come to gather his people. Those who live taste and holy. Those who resisted evil. In the twinkling of an eye, changing out the refined. We'll go home to heaven. To live an eternal life, Maranatha. Jesus the Christ, Jesus is coming, 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 Maranatha. Jesus the Christ, Jesus is coming. Then a return with 10,000 saints, and he won't be ignored. All knees will bow and have to confess that he is Lord. Maranatha, Jesus the Christ, Jesus is coming, Maranatha. 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 Jesus the Christ, Jesus is coming. Praise God for that song by Lord Foster. And this time, we're going to go right into the world today. And the title of today's message is going to be Sensitivity to God's Voice. Sensitivity to God's Voice. And thank God for the um, ability to be sensitive to his voice. 
because of course, b before we were born again, we, we could not hear the voice of God because our hearts were hardened. Because the Bible says, of course, in 2 Corinthians, how that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God. God gives us a new heart when we're born again, a heart that is sensitive to his voice and receptive to his voice. Now, again, the topic today is um, sensitivity to God's voice, because, of course, when we are born again, we are made sensitive, but then we have to stay sensitive to his voice, and we have to let him teach us how to stay sensitive, that our hearts will not become hardened, because Paul talks about Christians whose actually their consciousness can become seared and hardened to God become hard-hearted again. So remember, just because you are born again and your heart was once sensitive to God, the next thing we have to do is keep it sensitive. And one kingdom principle we need to keep in mind, whatever God gives us, then we have to protect it because the Bible says um, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse number 23, protect your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Whatever God gives you, if he gives you um, the Holy Spirit, if he gives you a husband, gives you a wife, whatever he gives you, then next you have to depend on him to teach you how to protect it. God will protect it, but you have to assist God and let God protect whatever he gives you. Otherwise, like the Bible did say in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse number 11, Jesus said this, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take your crown. And then again, John chapter 10, verse number 10, the Bible said this, the thief come not, talking about Satan, the thief come not before to steal, kill, and to destroy. Then the second clause of that verse 10 said this, Jesus said, but I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So we see a contrast here. The first clause that, of that sentence says, Satan come to steal, kill, and destroy. But then the second clause, Jesus said, but I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So Satan, again, is a thief and he's a robber. And he, we must give him credit what credit is due. He's a good thief and he's a good robber because he steals from the children of God. Yes, he does. He steals things that God has given us. Sometimes we say, well, I know God gave me this, so I know it's, everything's all right. No. For example, your marriage. It is said that... Um, you might say, God gave me this marriage and God gave me this person. Yes, God gives you the marriage, but then you have to keep maintaining that marriage. The maintenance work is done right down here. God might give you a house, and you might look at that house, brand spanking new house, and just, that's nice. But guess what? There's going to have to be some maintenance work done on that house. Amen. You know, the gutters might run into trouble. The... Um, Various things might happen. It might need painting. The air conditioning, the heating system might go out. The plumbing might go bad. The maintenance is done by you. And therefore, even in a marriage situation, um, your marriage might be made in heaven, but, you, but the devil can steal it if you don't keep that maintenance down here. Because remember the Bible said, Jesus said, Matthew chapter 26, 41 and 42, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation, for the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we're dealing with what God wants to uh, give us, but remember, you have to watch and pray, maintain it, glory to God, keep a guard over it, pray and ask God to, again, teach you how to um, do spiritual warfare for what he gives you, praise God. Now again, now the topic is of sensitivity to God's voice. And what we're saying here, all right, so when you were born again, you, you received sensitivity to his voice. But if you're not careful, if you began to um, walk in your Christian walk and you don't stay in the presence of God, one way you keep sensitive to the voice of God is by coming into his presence and living there. In other words, staying on your face before God, having a prayer life, that is alive and well. Don't have a prayer life that is dead, half dead, sick, and almost non-existent. Keep your prayer life alive. The Bible said in the book of um, Psalm 16, verse 11, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence 
is the fullness of joy, and at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So God has a place for us in his presence. Therefore, that will keep you, your spirit sensitive to him. And people of God, we do want our, vo- our hearts to be kept sensitive to the voice of God because we are in trouble if we cannot hear from God. Remember the Bible says in the book of St. John, chapter 10, verse number 27, that um, the Lord says, I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. So he's the shepherd for his sheep, but my sheep Hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And it's very important that we hear the voice of the shepherd because sheep, they depend. That's their livelihood, their, their life, their um, glory to God. Just protection depends on them hearing the voice of God. Psalm 32, verse number 8, a promise was given to each of us. He said in this, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go, I will guide you with my eye. God will guide us. Oh, and we need guidance, guidance through this world. Did you know that? This, no, this world is no playground. Amen. Jesus said that Satan is the prince of this air, and we're walking through here. It's like um, this is um, warfare, glory to God. And this, the, what, what we're dealing with right now, Satan is out to destroy us, glory to God. We are in battle right now. The Bible says, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 3, that and it talks about we are soldiers for God. He said, no man that warreth entangleth himself. That's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had called him to be a soldier. You and I have been enlisted into the army of Almighty God. We are soldiers right now. And if you are a soldier, then you cannot entangle yourself with the affairs of, 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 of city life or your, your um, life that you were involved in before you got saved but, or life that you were involved in before you came to God. So God said, we are soldiers. I'm going to be redundant. Of course, that scripture again. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath called him to be a soldier. A soldier cannot be entangled with um, all kinds of things. A soldier has to be one track minded. When the battle is going on, when those bullets are, are kind of whizzing by your head and grenades are going off and bombs are going out around you and the enemy is engaged in attacking you, you have to be one track minded. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Oh yes, you have to be focused if you're a child of God. Therefore, in order, and of course remember, even in a military setting, you have to be able to hear what your commander says. You have to be able to take orders. The Bible says in the book of um, Psalm 23, Verse number, Psalm 37, verse 23. The Bible says, this, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Order, that is a military term. Glory to God. You and I, we are soldiers in God's army. We take orders from him. But it's going to be a sad day when the army that God is um, using cannot hear the voice of their commander. The, 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 the army is in trouble when the general cannot get the orders to his people. Amen. So it's very important, people. We have to have sensitivity to the voice of God. Let's look at the chart here for a moment. And again, the Holy Spirit, like I have talked about before, he represents um, the nature of God and how God deals with mankind. Remember how when Jesus was baptized, the, the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. Remember, a dove is a gentle bird. A, a, a dove is not pushy. A dove is quiet in nature, but he's pure. And therefore, that's how God deals with us. So therefore, if we want to be um, able to be um, people who hear the voice of God, sensitive to his voice, then we have to be a people who we have to let our nature become gentle. We have to learn how to stand. We have to learn how to be quiet. We have to learn how to have a listening ear. Remember what Jesus said when he was talking to the seven churches of Asia in the book of Revelation? Each of those seven churches at the end of his talk, he said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. So again, our ears have to be open to God. 
good God Almighty, the Bible said in the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verse number 4, it said this, glory to God, that God, he awakened my ears to hear as the learn. He awakened, that's Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4, the second part, though. He awakened my ear to hear as the learn. He awakened them morning by morning. Each day, God will awaken your ears to hear him on a daily basis. Bottom line, just because you heard from God yesterday, then you have to not take for granted that the next day is just going to come naturally. Hearing the voice of God come supernaturally. When you're dealing with God, it's a supernatural dealing. It's a supernatural affair. Glory to God. So you have to be caught up into the supernatural to hear from God, to be sensitive to his voice. The Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Hallelujah. So therefore, um, you have to be caught up to walk with God, caught up to talk with God, caught up to hear from God, caught up in his spirit to recognize when he is giving you instructions. Glory to God. Supernatural, walking in the supernatural power of God. So you have to keep your spiritual man and your spiritual life tuned up so that you can hear from God. Keep, a, keep the wax out of your, keep the spiritual wax out of your ears. Amen. Because the Bible talks about in the book of Ephesians, in the book of Hebrews, and also in the book of um, Corinthians, how God, and also in the book of Isaiah, God's people becoming dull of hearing. God's people having spiritual wax in their ears. God's people not able to hear from God. They're not being sensitive to what God says to them. It's not that God's not talking. They're just not listening because other things have distracted them from God. So we want to stay focused, and we want God's sensitivity. We want to be sensitive to the voice of God. And one way we stay sensitive to the voice of God is to, again, not get caught up in things of this world. Hey, be careful what you focus your attention on, what gets your attention. The Bible says in the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse number 19, notice, notice how Satan desensitized many of God's pure people. Mark 4, 19, he said, the, the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, crowd out the word, it becomes unfruitful. In other words, you can just get busy. You know, get, um, people don't understand this, but there's a sin called the sin of busyness. We're just, just so busy. Mark 4, 19 again. L listen to what the Bible said. Jesus speaking here, Mark 4, 19. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. You get busy with doing even legitimate things. You have care that you're supposed to you have bills to pay, you have things to do, but the legitimate cares of this world can be a sin if you put them before God. Amen. So therefore, you get busy. The sin of busyness can, call, can desensitize you to the voice of Almighty God. And some might say, well, I'm not committing fornication. I'm not stealing. I'm not cussing. I'm not drinking. I'm not getting drunk. But you're not listening to the voice of God. The sin of omission, the sin of not taking time to come into the presence of God. Psalm 31, verse number 15, the writer said this, my times are in your hand. In other words, you don't own yourself. I don't own myself. We belong to God. Lock, stock, and barrel. We belong to him. We're not our own. You have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which belong to God. Every part of you belongs to God. Thank you, Jesus. Your time belongs to God. Amen. Because we are bought with a price. We are actually love slaves. Glory to God. Paul called himself the prisoner of the Lord. I've never been in prison, but um, you don't get too much freedom. Say so about what you do in prison. They tell you when to get up, when to go to bed, when to come in, and when to go out. Amen. Paul said, I'm a prisoner of the Lord. I don't mind being a prisoner of God. Amen. He treats, he treats his prisoners well. Glory to God. But, but you are not your own. We have used the analogy like when you're a soldier, you're not your own, and when you're in prison, you're not your own, but you belong to God. And we are love slaves. Glory to God. I don't mind being a slave. God's slave. He's a love slave. He treats people right. Hallelujah. I would rather be a slave to God than a slave of the devil, because if you're a slave to the devil, he will treat you wrong. Amen. Benefits are very minimal with the devil. Amen. When you're working for the devil. But I would rather be a love slave for God. All right. God owns us. 
Therefore, in order to stay sensitive to the voice, uh, for example, if you were waiting for a call, someone said, I'm going to give you a very important call, then you wouldn't have that TV going loud. You wouldn't be in the kitchen doing the dishes. You wouldn't be talking to... In other words, you would keep things at a minimum so that your mind and attention would not be distracted. Amen. And the same thing with God. You can't just let yourself... I'm going back being redundant. Mark 4, 19. Jesus was talking about how folk get off track and how they lose their sensitivity to God, how they lose their walk with God, how they lose their ability to hear God, how they lose their ability to obey God. Again, Mark 4, 19. Listen to this again. The care of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things, choke the world. You get distracted, and it becomes unfruitful. God cannot produced through you because he cannot let the seed of the word be water. He cannot, he cannot talk to you. He cannot teach you because you're busy. Glory to God. Kind of like students in a school. If they come to class, they have to pay attention to that teacher. Glory to God. If they're going to get anything out of the class. You cannot be sitting, sitting there with your um, cell list, talking on, in class, talking on your cell phone or, or um, writing notes or whatever. You know what, what we do, sleeping in class. All these things can be things that will, will take your attention from the teacher. And God is the teacher. He wants to talk to us. Glory to God. These things desensitize us to the voice of God, desensitize us to the presence of God, desensitize us to the will of God. Amen. Christians who don't know what the assignment is, Christians who don't really know the word, know the voice of God, are you kidding? Hallelujah. Going back to John chapter 10, verse number 27, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And a stranger, stranger they will not follow but will flee from him. We run from the devil. We don't run with the devil. Amen. And we run from the world, run from the world, and we don't run with the world. Some Christians, you're not careful. You're going to be running with the devil, running with the world. Amen. Because you're running from God instead of running to God. So, again, being sensitive to the voice of God, be in an in atmosphere where we'll be focused that the Holy Spirit itself can be the example of how we are, we get quiet and, and uh, block out those things that would distract us from a walk with God, a successful walk with God. Because there is, you can have a walk with God, but that doesn't mean it is a successful walk. As a matter of fact, when we stand before God in the judgment, um, some might say, well, I walk with you, but did you walk with me successfully? Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, that then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, then shalt thou have good success. So there's success, but that doesn't mean it's a good success. Have the God kind of success. I want to successfully hear the voice of God. Christian get into trouble. Christian go up wrong paths. They go on the wrong roads. They, they, they become affiliated with the wrong people because they're not listening to God. God will talk to you. He will tell you um, who to marry. He will tell you um, who your boyfriend is supposed to be. He'll, he'll actually tell you um, even what, what bank the bank at. Because, you know, all banks are not good. I'm just giving an example. I'm, I'm not trying to get too spiritual, but, you know, sometimes he will tell you what's best for you, in other words. He will tell you the right house to buy. Of course, he will put the desire in your heart. You would like the house, but sometimes you might like a house, and he said, no, don't buy that house. Don't buy it because some things you don't know about this house. I'm just trying to show you why it's important for it to be sensitive to the voice of God at all times, on a 24-hour basis, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days out of a year, know the voice of the Lord. Glory to God. You, you don't have time to take off. I, I'm taking a vacation. No, every day, glory to God. Jesus said in the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4, give us this day our daily bread. That bread speaks of, talks to us. We need, remember Jesus, I'm the bread from heaven. Glory to God. I am the bread of heaven, so we need that bread on a daily basis. And don't, don't again, be fooled into thinking that just because you're born again, 
just because you heard from God last year that you just automatically hear from God. You don't automatically hear from God. We don't automatically hear from God. We supernaturally hear from God. 1 John chapter 4, verse number 1. Remember that scripture? Glory to God. The Bible says, A beloved, glory to God, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they be of God or not. In other words, a lot of voices will talk to you. Paul talks with a lot of voices in the world, but they're not um, all from God. You have some religious voices. My goodness, the devil talked to Eve in the garden. His voice must have sounded just right. Because when, when Eve said, God said, leave that tree alone, what did the devil say? He spoke also. God spoke, but the devil spoke also. The devil stole Eve's position in the garden because the devil said, hath God said, and she believed the devil. Christians, sometimes, if you're not careful, please stay sensitive to the voice of God. Don't let the cares of this life clutter. Don't get cluttered. Keep your life uncluttered. Keep it simple that you might be able to hear the voice of God and not have all these other things distracting you like Martha was distracted. She didn't hear the voice of God, but Mary did. Amen. Time is up for today. God bless you, and we'll talk to you next time. Now, I want to make an offer for you today, a book that I've written entitled, Lord, Teach Us to Pray. And this book can be sent to you for any amount. You just send it to our uh, ministry, the pure box number on your um, screen, and this book will really be a blessing to you because Actually, we are dealing with the Lord's Prayer, but how it was actually spoken in the Greek. It was written in Greek. Therefore, we have actually looked into the Greek language and brought out some very important things about the Lord's Prayer that are not actually in the King James Version, but the original Lord's Prayer and the word that was spoken was, was, is really going to be a blessing and a revelation to you. So order this book today. Send any amount, and um, we will send this book to you, and it will be a blessing to you. Because remember, we need God to teach us how to pray. And this book gives us insight as to how God teaches us how to pray and how to talk to him. God bless. Hello, this is Bishop Jackson here again with my lovely wife, Darisa. We would like to invite you to call our Dolly Word ministry line. This is not a prayer line, but it is a message for you, a three-minute pre-recorded word of inspiration and encouragement. And you may dial this number 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Simply call 317-436-1346. Sounds of Revival was brought to you by Perry Jackson Ministries and Greater Love International Church and Revival Center in Indianapolis at 6433 East Washington Street. Worship Sunday at 1030 a.m. and 6 p.m. Tuesdays at 730 p.m. For directions or to receive your free bi-monthly newsletter, call 317-796-0938 or email jackson-perry at att.net. To request today's program or sermon on CD or DVD, please send an offering of any amount to Perry Jackson Ministries, P.O. Box 26891, Indianapolis, Indiana 46226. Ask for the offer number on the screen.